Hello everybody and welcome back to the back alley of Dave and Buster's. On my journey to branch out from Goosebumps a Haunting Hour and Creeped Out, I have been recommended a few creep show episodes. Well, I say episodes, but I really should say stories because there's two stories per episode and you guys only talk about one, so I guess it's creep show stories. And most of you guys know creep show from the movies that were released in the 80s. There's one released in 2006 that doesn't get talked about as much. And those movies paid homage to the 50s and 60s horror comic books. But I'm not going to be talking about the movies today. I'm going to be talking about the 2019 TV show. And I got to say, it's probably the best ongoing horror anthology show we have today. There's a few new ones that sprouted up, but I think this one's the most fun. Across all four seasons, it has terrifying monsters, awesome body horror, from werewolves to evil flowers to Bob Ross fighting the evil dead. Wait, is that an actual episode? This show really does have it all. And with that being said, it is a little bit more graphic than The Haunting Hour because The Haunting Hour is a kids show and this is on Shudder and they're free to do whatever they want. So I will be censoring anything I think the YouTube lords won't approve of, which is a lot. And if you want to see the uncensored version, for some reason you freak, you can find it on my Patreon. The $5 members will be getting the full uncensored version of my video. So join me today as we talk about one of the stories from the very first episode known as House of the Head. The show shows a bunch of comic panels and stuff and there's tons of Easter eggs in them. I am not going to be talking about any of them. I'm very sorry I forgot to um look at it maybe next time <laughs> but there is a comic panel that conveniently introduces us to the story so I'm gonna read what it says right here ah there you are kitties the next tale will have you wishing for a house you can call your own but you know the old saying be careful what you wish for because you might just get it unless it gets you first there's a monstrous magic in the air in this scary tale I call House of the Head. Then we get a nice clean transition into the episode where we meet our main character, Evie, and her parents, Marsha and Randy. Evie is showing off her nice new dollhouse, which must have cost her parents a fortune. Oh, it's not that expensive. Still a good chunk of money. I just thought that dollhouses were like way more expensive than that. And we get to meet her doll family, the Smith Smiths. Sounds more like a, like a stutter than a name. <laughs> and that family consists of father, mother, Ethan, and Dane. Sadly, Evie can't stay home and play with the Smith Smiths all day. She has to go to school, but we just skip over that boring stuff and she gets back home almost immediately. When she gets home to check on her dolls, she sees something new. Looks like the head of a zombie or something has found its way inside her dollhouse. Not only is there an unwanted visitor in the house, but looks like her other dolls have moved. Weren't you two laying down? And it also looks like they're scared. Well, kind of. As scared as a doll can look. Ethan definitely looks scared though. Ethan is me when I was like 12 years old and watching like, I called Jeff the killer at 3 a.m. Those YouTube videos. You guys remember those? What if I start making those videos? Would you guys still love me? And in the time for Evie to merely pan her eyes to the other rooms of the house, the head has moved. And for some reason, Evie just rubs the bloody part of the head with her finger. And she does in fact get blood on her finger. Yuck. Yeah, gross. I think it's to show that the head is a Alive and that it still bleeds, but I don't understand why she just reached her hand in there and touched it. If anything, I would have picked up the head and taken it out of the dollhouse. Why did she just leave it in there? But Evie has a little mommy dom, mommy dommy. <laughs> but Evie has a little mommy daughter date, so she has to leave the Smith Smiths alone for a little while, and she tells them to wait right there. Don't move. Yeah, I'm sure that'll work. Fast forward to that night and Evie comes home to see that the dolls have in fact moved again. And they've moved pretty far from their bed this time. And the head is just chilling on the couch. What if he's like a chill guy? Why are we all just suddenly like terrified of him? Because he's just like a, a severed head? What if he's like a nice guy? Like we didn't even get to know him. I think that's profiling. I think we're profiling the head. I think we should give him a chance. Well, Duke gets a pass because Duke is a dog. He can't profile people. Evie takes a look around the house again to check on the Smith Smiths. And when she looks back, the head is gone and she can't seem to find it on this side of the house. So she decides to put the wall back up and walk around to the other side where we see Found it. Okay, this dolly zoom out of the dollhouse is probably the coolest thing in this episode. It really makes you feel like you're like inside the dollhouse with these dolls. And all this strange doll movement is making Evie a little scared. So she decides to go ahead and try to go to bed tonight. Touch on the next day and Evie's mom takes her to a doll shop where she can buy other dolls and little furniture and stuff. It's pretty cool. And this is when we meet Mr. Ogman, the owner. I think I'm saying it right. Ogman, Ogman. He made Evie's dollhouse and he claims that it's one of a kind. Mr. Ogman and Marsha talk about how kids playing with dolls is really special because it helps them figure out who they are. 
I guess that's why they call them figurines. Then Mr. Augman says, and They don't typically like to tell you about it either. Tell you about what? What they're figuring out. Wait, is Mr. Augman in on this? Is he the reason this weird stuff is happening? Oh no, the way he said that just doesn't sit right with me. I feel like he's up to something. He also built the house, so he could have hid the head in there somehow, like in the walls or something. Evie looks around at some dolls and she picks up a police officer and she's kind of hoping that maybe the police officer will also come to life and help them figure out the head problem. So she buys the officer, takes him home and sets him in with the family. But when she does this, she once again, can't find the head. Evie has to leave again for a little bit to, you know, take a shower, eat, do human things. But when she gets back, the Smith Smiths are watching as the cop searches for the head. And his investigation takes him to the attic where... What's going on here? Her dad interrupts little playtime, where he tells her it's time for bed and she can play with the dolls in the morning. But before he can leave, she stops him, gives him a big hug and tells him... I love you, daddy. But I think this was a tactic to get on his good side because she does not listen to him at all. Rather, she grabs a flashlight and decides to help the cop find the head. Wait, where did he go? Oh no, the head is not a chill guy. Not a chill guy. We profiled right, guys. Profiling works. The poor Smith Smiths have to just stand there and stare at the deadless cop. They just stand there in disbelief as Evie tries to look around really quick to see if she can find what room the head is in. And she finds it inside of a mirror. And this is when Evie gives it one last warning. Stay away from the Smith Smiths. Before going to bed. The next day we head back to the doll shop where Evie asks Mr. Ogman if they have a priest or a rabbi or something she can buy, which he sadly doesn't have. But it's a little weird that a little girl wants a priest doll. So he asks her, what do you need them for? She tells him that she wants a spiritual doll because I guess she wants to try to exercise the head. So he points her to the Native American dolls because they're spiritual people. So she grabs one off the shelf, takes it home, and sets it in front of the Smith Smiths. And he is there to protect them, which I think makes them pretty happy. And once again, Evie has to leave to go downstairs for family movie night. Because if she sat there and watched the dolls, they just wouldn't move. But while she's down there watching the movie, all she can think about is what's going on with the Smith Smiths. Okay, we're going into the last five minutes of the episode, so you guys need to buckle up. This shit gets real. Really real fucking crazy. <laughs> Evie goes back upstairs to find the chief is now looking for the head. And she tries to help the chief find it by looking around too, but she's having a hard time as well. And it looks like the dolls are moving faster now because now every time she looks away, the dolls change rather than before where she could be gone for a few hours and they would barely move. She finds the chief is now looking outside. So I guess the head somehow escaped. So she runs to the side of the house to try to help him, but no! It's too late. And now the head is closer to the Smith Smiths than ever before. Look out! But Evie is getting a little too loud and her screams accidentally woke up her mother who was downstairs. So she comes up to check on her. She asks if she's okay, if she's scared, if she wants to come lay down with her and her dad. But Evie lies and is like, no, I'm not scared. I want to stay in my room. But her mom reminds her, it's okay to be a little scared and it is okay to still sleep in your parents' room. She is like five. I love this family dynamic in this episode, by the way. They're all very loving the whole time. Even though their daughter is a little bit weird and doing some weird stuff, they support her. And after her mom leaves, Evie immediately goes back to check on the Smith Smiths. No, the head got to the parents. But wait, where's Ethan? Ethan! Now that's fucked up. That's fucked up. Now that... That's fucked up. Evie angrily rips the head off of Ethan's body and throws it across the room. Why didn't she do that before? Why didn't you do that like when you first saw it? But now the head is in her room. So now she has to go find it. So she's looking around her room for this tiny head and she's having kind of a hard time doing it until... I guess that's the reason she didn't do it before. And she's way braver than me because she picks up the ugly fucker and puts him back in the dollhouse. No more. No more of the head. Then we cut to the next day where Evie decides she is done having the dollhouse. And it looks like she gave it away in a charity event, which is a little fucked up, but I mean, if it gets it out of the house as quick as possible, I, I guess I support it. And it looks like this woman is interested in buying the house. Well, not for long. And that's where the episode ends. One of the most effective stories. I Please go watch it on Shudder. It's so much better than any way I could tell you. You get so invested in these little dolls. 
I literally gasped at the end. Whenever they died, I was like, no, no. I also had a feeling throughout the whole like episode that maybe what is happening to them is going to start happening to Evie and her family. Luckily that didn't happen, but that would have been a really cool like parallel thing. So yeah, please go watch the full episode. Also just check out Creep Show on Shudder. It is such a cool show. The second episode has werewolves fighting and killing Nazis. Who doesn't love that? That's awesome. Let me know what you think about this episode in the comments below. Also, give me some more creep show stories you want to see me talk about. Like I said, the full uncensored version is going to be on my Patreon. You'll also get the videos a day early if you join my Patreon membership. It's only $5 a month. Thank you for watching the video all the way through. I appreciate you all and peace. <laughs>